In this clip, I will demonstrate how to produce histograms in Excel. So here's a data series we're going to use. This is a time series. We have year and month information, and here's our time series. So these are temperature anomalies. So they tell us how hot or warm our globe has become since 1880. In fact, let's look at this series. I'll uh, want to look at the entire series. We'll actually go to the very end. You can do that by going to press on shift, keep shift pressed, then press end, but you don't have to hold, and then the down arrow, and you go to the very, very end. So we'll go, we have data until 2017, September. So I'll take the last three cells away. I'm pressing the up arrows. And now I'm going to look at a chart, a line chart, to see what this looks like. And you can see a little bit of the hockey stick pattern, which is uh, possibly many of you have seen. And you can see these data go from about negative 1.5 to about plus 2. And knowing the range of the data is important when you uh, produce a histogram. So let me delete that uh, graph again. And I'll go to the top. So to make this problem slightly more interesting, um, I have written down here four sub periods here, 1880 to 1950, 1951 to 1980, 81 to 98 and 99 to 2015. And let's make the task that we want to calculate histograms for these four time periods. Sometimes it prepares, sometimes it pays to prepare. Yeah. And the way how we prepare here is we find out where the first observation in which row and in which row the last observation for each of these periods is. Okay, so clearly the first observation for 19 for the first period is here in row number two. Okay, so we write two in here. And let's find out where the uh, last observation is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to view and say freeze panes. So I can see the top of this table all the time. Now I need to go to 1950. And here we go. December 1950 is in row 853. 853. The first row for the next period is in 854. And I'll complete this table. And here's the last observation in row 1654. So I'll type this in here, 54. Good, I can remove the split or the freeze again. So we know the data go from negative two to plus two approximately. So the, let's create bins because that's what we're gonna do when we calculate histograms. We ask how many observations are in a particular data range. And let's use as the size of the bins 0.25. So from negative two, we go to negative 1.75 and then to negative 1.5 and so forth. Actually, you can highlight this. Excel realizes, oh, you want some regular sequence. And if you just drag it down, you can create that automatically. So now what we want in this cell is we want to know how many observations in a particular time period have been at most negative two. Then in here, we want the information how many observations in a particular time period were between negative two and negative 1.75 and so forth. And we're gonna want this basically for, both, for all these four time periods. So we'll do it once and then we, we realize that um, it will be fairly straightforward to replicate this. The command we're going to use is a command called frequency. Just write that here so you can see that. And the way how we're going to do it is a quite ingenious way in Excel. We actually highlight all the cells. Well, let's actually start with one cell only. We do it for one cell first. So we type frequency. And now we need, we need two things. We need a data array and a bin array. The bin array are these bin margins, which we've written down here. Data array, well, that's the appropriate observations here in column C. In fact, we already know it's gonna be 
from C2 colon to C853. Sometimes it's just easier to type the data in if you know the references. And our bin array, that's just here on the screen, so we can just highlight this. That's over here. So if I now close the uh, parenthesis and I press enter, I get a value just for the first cell, but I don't have it for the others. So Excel has a clever way to only enter the formula once, but have all cells completed. Actually, just highlight what you've written and copy this so it's in our uh, this uh, in our clipboard. Delete that cell again, and now we highlight all these cells in which we basically want these frequencies. They're all highlighted. And we write something in, so we go in our entry box in the top, and I just copy and paste what we've just done. And now what I also want you to do is to put dollar signs in there, because we will later copy these cells and we don't want the references to change. We'll put dollar signs in here to have fixed references. So now the important thing, however, is don't step, don't press enter yet, because we need a special enter to tell Excel that we want to fill all of these highlighted cells. And this very special enter is that you press control and shift and keep it pressed down and then press enter. And Excel copies that formula into all the fields. So for instance here 264, that means that we have 264 observation observations, monthly observations in the period from 1880 to 1950 that have values between negative 0.5 and negative 0.25. Actually exactly negative 0.5 is not going to be in, but anything just larger. So that's going to be the basis of our histogram. Right? If, For instance, let's do it just temporarily. If we wanted to plot this as a histogram, we could go for a column chart and you have a sort of histogram we would possibly make it slightly nicer looking but we'll do that later right? so I'll delete that again because I want to create a histogram for all four periods so now highlight all of this and then control V for copy uh, uh, excuse me highlight control C for copy and then go in the top cell here and then control V for paste these cells. Now these are totally unchanged because we have fixed cell references. In fact, the only thing we want to change now are the first and the last cell and we have the information here. 854 is the first row and 1213 the second row of what we now want. So we highlight everything, go into the formula and rather than the second row being the first cell, now it's 854. And the last cell is now 1213. And then don't press enter because again you will have to press control shift keep both of these down and then press enter and you can see how the numbers change now this is highlighted we press control c for copy control v for paste and again we just change the first and the last reference one two one four two one four two nine Control shift, hold it down and then press enter and we have to change. So control V, control C, control V to copy and paste. And the last row reference change, one for 30 to 1654. Control and shift held down, press enter and we have to change. So now you can already see what's going on here. As we go from the 1880 to 1950 to the later periods, we find more and more counts in higher temperatures. These are temperature anomalies, um, but higher numbers mean higher temperatures. So you can already tell that the global temperature is getting warmer through these periods of time. So how do we now create histograms? easiest the following. We create one figure 
with all four histograms. That may not be your taste and you can create four individual ones, but I'll show you how to do that. Highlight all four columns, go to insert, and now here in charts, press on the bars and we have a choice. Okay, 2D columns, different ones. And what I'm going to choose is this one here where the histograms are sort of stacked up behind each other. Okay, so here's our graph. Let's move it a little bit to the side and we'll make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, so there's a few aesthetics thing, aesthetic things we may want to do here. Firstly, we want to change the labels of the x-axis and perhaps these series labels here to be our um, decades. So right mouse click, select data. Okay, so firstly the series labels. Go to series one. Go to series one and press edit and you see there's a name option I will just click on this cell and we go to series 2 press edit in the name go to this cell and so we finish this for all four series so now we have our right series labels now the horizontal axis labels, that's the axis down here, we want our bin categories basically here. So we press edit and we just highlight our bin label. So the, these are the upper bin margins. You could of course also have ranges, create an extra um, column with ranges and use them here, but that will do for the moment. Now when we do histograms, we usually don't have these gaps between the bars. So what you do is you right mouse click on any sort of bar and go to format data series and there's a gap width option and just slide this down to zero. Now you see you have we've eliminated the gaps but perhaps we want to see little bound boundaries between the bars so you do that up here by fill and line and solid line border I will perhaps make it white you can choose other others. Now we have to highlight one of the red bars. We also say solid line, one of the green bars, solid line, and one of the purple bars, solid line. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So you ha we have it like this, and you could have a different chart title. Um, anomalies through the decades. Okay, through the decades. And here you have a pretty nice looking uh, combination of four histograms. Even if you can't see all the information, I think what you can pretty clearly see is that the temperature does indeed increase. Okay, as we move on in time, that means we go further back here, the bulk of the observations moves to the right. Let's go a little bit more fancy. If you're bothered by the fact that the, you can hardly see the red histogram, right mouse click on the blue histogram, go to format data series, and here are all your options again. Go to fill and line, and you see we have a solid fill in blue, and there's a transparency here. It currently says zero percent, so why don't we just say 50 percent transparency, and you can see how you now how we can now look through. And you could, of course, do exactly the same for the red one. We have a solid fill uh, in red and we do 50% transparency. And then the green one, solid fill, well, again, have to choose the color, 50. And lastly, solid fill purple and 50. Here you go. Okay. I'd say that looks like a pretty good graph.